In today's video, we're going to learn about something that is a must-know for most Python programmers, the JSON module. We'll cover jumping to JSON, unloading from JSON, how to make your own encoder and decoder, then wrap up with one of the most used CLI tools Python offers. My name is Jake, and this is the Python Standard Library. Let's start off first with dumping and loading, but you can also check the description for timestamps to each section. So what is JSON? JSON, which is short for JavaScript Object Notation, is a plain text data interchange format that is heavily inspired by JavaScript's syntax. However, JSON is language independent, so you don't need to know JavaScript to be able to use it. In fact, JSON is one of the most easily readable of the major data interchange formats. That's likely why approximately 97% of API requests involve the sending and receiving of JSON serialized strings. That's why I consider knowing how to handle JSON data as one of the critical skills for everyone that regularly works with APIs. Now beyond APIs, JSON is commonly seen in local data serialization and even configuration, which most of what we'll be doing today will just be local. If you watch my video on file input and output, then you'll likely know that I consider working with files to be one of the big steps forward in your programming journey, adding more permanence to a program that otherwise would just live during its execution time. And that's one of the areas where JSON can come in, is we can take random data like this and store it in a file, as well as retrieve it from a file later. And this is incredibly easy to do with JSON. All we need to do is to open a file, this one being export.json, to get your file handler. We'll just call this ex file, short for export. And then we're gonna use our first JSON method called dump. Now, as you can see here, there are a number of arguments to this dump function, but for now, we're only gonna be concerned with the first two positional arguments. And that's going to be first, the data that you're dumping, and then the file you're gonna be dumping to, in our case, ex file. So you can think of the argument position this way. You're dumping what? into where, what being the data and where being the file. And now that's ran, we have this new export.json file, which we can see we have our location Raleigh, temperature 70 and humidity 50. Now, right now this does look like a normal Python dictionary, but the data structures are technically different. This is considered an object in JSON. In fact, many Python built-ins have a translation from Python into JSON. For example, dictionaries turn into objects, less than tuples into arrays, strings remain strings, ints, floats, etc. turn into numbers, true is still true, false is still false, and then none becomes null. And the inverse is also true. Now I split the layout so we can more easily see the difference between the two files. Now, while this is decently readable on the right, we can do a few things to help us. And this first one is to pass in an argument that I use all the time when I write JSON to files, which is to set the indent equal to four. Now, if you run this, we can see what that does. Beautiful. Now we have a much more readable version of this. And an indent of four means we're going to have one, two, three, four spaces of indentation between each new section. Now that's much more readable, but we can do yet another thing if we wanted to as well, which is to set sort keys to true. And if we do that and run it, we see we now have humidity at the top, then location, finally temperature. So these are all steps just to make it a little bit more human readable. So far, we've just exported a single dictionary with some simple data types in it, but we can expand that to a little bit more complex data as well. Here we have a list of dictionaries with locations Raleigh and Pune, as well as what I'm just now realizing is a typo. We'll fix that and then run it again. And we see that we have, again, a similar data structure on the right. Not too bad. Remember, lists become arrays in JSON. So we have an array of objects, each of those objects currently consisting of strings and numbers. And another great thing about JSON, just like Python, is that this data can be arbitrarily nested. Here we added another set of lists under the forecast. We run this one more time. We now see the formatting has changed a little bit 
with a new forecast array containing our strings here. Now, not only can we dump to a file, but we can also use JSON to convert this data structure into a string. And to do that, we're going to create a data stir variable, which is going to take the output of JSON.dumps this time. Dumps takes a lot of the same keyword arguments as we saw before. The main difference here is that we only need to pass in our data and not a file handler because the output of json.dumps is going into this variable here and then print that out. So if you run our script, we see data star is equal to a single long string here that has our nested JSON structure in it. Now, if this is something that's perfectly suitable to pass into an API, it's not as suitable for people to read it. So again, we can bring in our indent and then apply that same indentation to the resulting string. So we run this one more time, we see a bunch of new line characters in there. If we just simplify this print statement, then it gives us that more friendly print. It's pretty nice. Okay, I simplified the data here for our next part, which is going to be about loading the data from files into a Python data structure. And this is going to be just as easy as above. We again want to open that file handler. This time I'm going to call it mfile or import file and call this loaded data, which is going to store the result of json.load. And the only thing we're going to currently pass into json.load is that import file, which will then save this file and then load it in IPython. Here we see the printout of that data string as expected. And right now we should have loaded data, which there we go. We have that loaded data dictionary, which came directly from export.json. Furthermore, just like we can dump to a string, we can also load from a string. And that, simply enough, is json.loads, or load string. For that, we're going to take back in that data string, reload our file, and not only do we have loaded data, which has that dictionary, we should also have loaded string, which is equivalent. The only difference we see here is that loaded data has our keys sorted, because that's what we did when we dumped it which was also preserved when we loaded it back in. However, json.dumps does not have the sorted keys, which means when it was loaded back in, the keys remain unsorted. However, we can see that the two dictionaries are equivalent. And in fact, they're all equivalent to the original data dictionary at the top of the file. So those are the basics of dumping and loading to and from JSON files. Pretty easy, right? Well, it's definitely easy when everything are just basic Python data types that we saw in the table earlier. However, what happens when you don't have basic Python data types? Well, that's where custom encoders and decoders can come in. Now for this scenario, we have a book class here. It's pretty simple, just has some attributes that we store on class instances, which we have an instance of our first book on line 10. Now in this scenario, we want to export our books to a JSON file. So let's run this and see what happens. And here we see we have an exception, ultimately telling us that our book object is not JSON serializable. If we think back to that chart that we saw earlier in the video, those are the major built-in types that Python supports. Custom classes like ours here aren't supported out of the box, so we need to think of different ways to encode and decode them in JSON. One of the ways to do this is to write a custom encoder. So let's do that now. And we'll position that between our book instance and when we're actually dumping the book into our file. So we'll call this class book encoder, which is going to inherit from JSON encoder. And the method that we need to write here is the default method, which of course is going to take in self as well as some object. And how this is going to work is as the JSON encoder is going through the data we're trying to dump, anything that it already doesn't know how to decode, it's going to pass into this default function. So this means that this default method won't override any of the basic types that were already shown in that table earlier in the video. But for our use case, that works perfectly fine. We just want to handle our books. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to check to see if this object is an instance of a book. If so, then we're going to return a dictionary, which will become a JSON object. And we're going to store that its type is a book. And we're also going to store its data in another field. And we're just going to put the current contents of this object's dictionary. Now, if this isn't a book, we just need to return 
super dot default passing along that object to allow the JSON encoder to handle it as it normally would. Okay, not too bad. So with this book encoder class written, we can pass this into dump as an argument to the class parameter. So we pass in book encoder, and now let's try this again. We don't get any immediate errors, which is awesome. And if we look in the books.json file, we see we have our book here. Beautiful. So we see that it's type book, and then the data for the book has title, author, and year in it, exactly as you're expecting. So let's split this file off to the right, and we'll add a new book for Jurassic Park, and then create a list of books with these two entries in it. So Brave New World and Jurassic Park. We can then pass in this books list to our JSON dump so we can see that when we run it, we do indeed get a JSON array of two objects, those being our book Brave New World and Jurassic Park. So you see that it'll work with all nested books that it encounters. Now, while that's useful, what if we want to get the information back out of the file? Well, for that, instead of writing a book decoder class, what I'm going to do instead is show you how to write an object hook, which I'll explain as we go along. So we're going to create a new function here called book decoder, which is going to take in some type of JSON object, which in Python is a dictionary. So we can either keep this as JSON object or in the Python world, we'll refer to it as JSON dictionary. And since it's a dictionary, we can see which keys are available by running get on it. And we're going to search for that type key. And we're going to see if it's equal to book. So as it encounters objects, we're going to read through this object or dictionary. If it has a type key set to book, then we know that this is a book that we want to decode. And the remainder of what we need to do here is return an instance of book, unpacking JSON dict, and then that data dictionary within it. Beautiful. So anytime that it encounters one of our book objects, the decoder is going to create an instance of the book and return that instead of the dictionary. Now, if it's not a book object, we still have to play nice and return that JSON dictionary. Okay. And now we have a book decoder. And in order to decode it, it's as simple as opening up that books.json file. We'll store it as imported, which will take in the result of running json.load on that import file. And we're going to pass in our book decoder as an object hook. Notice the difference here that when we're encoding it, we're passing in a specific encoder class, which is different than passing in an object hook function. And at the very end of the file here, we're just going to print out the titles of both books. Keep in mind that if these aren't properly decoded from dictionaries into books, we're not going to have that title attribute on either of these, and we're going to get an attribute error. So fingers crossed that it works. Let's give ourselves a little room clear it, just keep it clean, and then run it. And there we go. We have Brave New World and Jurassic Park printed out. Beautiful. So thanks to Jace and just a few extra lines of code, we now have a persistent books data structure that we can read to and write to whenever we want. Now, if writing custom encoders and decoders is a little clumsy, there are another set of options that are available that you might see more commonly in the Python community, which I'll show now. Let's take a quick look at what we have on screen right now. We have a JSON serialized base class, which provides a toJSON method, which will dump an unformatted JSON string of the class's dictionary, as well as a fromJSON class method, which will attempt to create an instance of that class given some JSON string. This person class here, which inherits from JSON serialize, is just a simple person based on the name tuple example we've given in a previous video which also has a nice custom wrapper. At the very bottom here, we have an instance of person, Alice, which we'll use for this example. So if we load self-serialize.py, we can see that we have Alice. Now Alice has that to JSON method, which if we run it, we get a JSON encoded string for the contents of Alice. This to JSON method is a pattern that you're gonna see repeatedly in various forms as you're looking through different Python code bases. There's a decent amount of library authors that like to assist you in converting their objects to and from JSON in this way. It's less formal than an encoder or a decoder and typically requires you to be a little bit more hands-on. However, it's much more flexible because we could pass this JSON string along to some API. Now let's store that 
and then create Alice 2, which will use person dot from JSON, passing in that JSON string. And now we have Alice 2, which is the same as Alice 1. Pretty nice. So in this directory, I have a file called fakejobs.json. If we were to cat that out to see what's inside of it, we see it's a good amount of nested JSON data. But this is pretty hard to read. And that's one of the places that this tool comes in. If we run python-m json.tool, we can see with this help text that it takes two positional arguments as well as some additional options. The first positional argument is the file you want it to read in. And then the second positional argument, which is optional, is where you want it to output the result. So let's clear the screen and see what this looks like. If we pass in our fakejobs.json file, we see that now it has restructured the JSON into a much more human readable format. And if you want to save that into say formatted.json, we can do so and then cat out that formatted file. And we see we have that new indentation formatting applied. Now, while you can work with local files, another big use for this is working with responses from APIs. So if we look at an API that gives us a ton of data back, for example, the Pokemon API, we see that what we get out of it really isn't very readable for a human because it gives us a ton of non-formatted JSON back. However, if we were to type this or pass the result of this curl into Python's JSON.tool, we then get that structured JSON. Again, it's still a lot of information, but significantly easier to read. We can also then redirect that into a file called gengar.json, saving it to that file. And if we open that up, we now have a structured JSON file for us to look at. And again, this is still a lot of data, but with the json.tool, we'll now have a much easier way of understanding what that data structure looks like and how best to deal with it. But that wraps up this video and this stop on the Python standard library tour. If you learned something new, please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing this video with your friends. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.